Gorilla, Sony, and Deutsch brought me onto this project to help develop the story, camera, and action for the piece. We focus on Narvel. The Helgen forces are hitting them hard, and they need to move. Narvel sees an opportunity to turn the tide and fires five shots which need to connect so they can advance. We open within Narvel's eye. The Gorilla team incorporated super high-res models and reflection maps to put us directly in the sight of the gun. As the camera pulls back, we zoom out and rack focus to the background. We cut behind the bullet to get a good look at where we are headed. I call this the Star Destroyer shot, as the bullet coming in overhead reminds me of the Star Destroyer from Star Wars. From here we see another ISA soldier in front of us who has just been hit by a Helgen gun butt. This is my favorite shot. The Helgen we just saw knocking the soldier down in the previous is now bearing right down upon us, looking us right in the eye. Here, as the bullet comes closer, we rack focus to the reflection where we see the distorted Helgen Heavy. Rays pour through the background as fine debris falls. In the puddle, we find the foot of the falling XO. In the reflection, the Helgen Heavy blasts away. Here, we lead the bullets into a structure where we see the first couple do their job, taking this building out. This is a very cool part of the gameplay. Now we follow the bullets through the columns as they crumble. I love passing through the debris and dust. In the distance, you get a first look at where we are headed. Red eyes glow in the dark. In the final shot, we dive with the hero bullet into the dark. We overtake the bullet and a few henchmen to reach the mark. A Helgen leader backlit with cinematic shadows, making him seem twice as big and menacing. We fly right into the eye, knowing full well our bullet is right behind us. It was a pleasure to be invited to play. Hello everybody, my name is Jan-Bart van Beek, and I am the art director of Killzone 2. Normally, a large part of the memory of the PlayStation 3 is taken up by the data that we need to run the gameplay, such as all the different weapons and their animations. For this movie, we didn't need that data, so a lot of that memory became available. Extra memory means extra detail, so let me show you a couple of things that we added, especially for this commercial. One example is the shooter's eye, which we have pressed a lot because you can get so close to it. In normal gameplay, you will never be able to get very close to an eye, so all that resolution is not really necessary. But for this shot, we increased the resolution of the eye so that it uses the same amount of texture space as the entire character. Now another thing we detailed out is the bullet itself. Uh, normally you would never be able to see the bullet flying, but in this movie it's really the focal point. Uh, the bullet you see here has about the same amount of polygon detail as the entire gun it came from. We made this movie after Killzone 2 was already done, and many of our artists were already researching new techniques that we didn't use in Killzone 2. Now one such technique is called high frequency detail mapping and this means that you add really fine details such as visible threats to clothing, fine sand grade to concrete or pores to skin. And although we had used this technique on textures for props and on our levels, we hadn't really used it for characters yet. So the characters in this movie became a nice test bed for those techniques. So as you can see all the characters in this movie have that additional fine detail added to their textures. And this is definitely a technique that we're really excited about and we're going to be using in our future games. Here you see another experimental technique. The engine used for Killzone 2 had no support for real reflections yet, but thankfully the script required a reflective puddle. All the explosions we use in the game are made to look best when they're played in real time. But the explosions in this movie all needed to be in ultra slow motion. Our special effects artists first tried to simply slow the effects down, but that didn't really result in the look that we were going for. So ultimately we decided to create a special super slow motion version of all the effects used in this movie. It was very cool to see all of these new techniques being developed by our coders, and they did it very quickly as well because they knew they had to get it finished to be included in this movie. Well thank you for listening, and I hope you're gonna enjoy the game. Goodbye!
Hello, my name is Paulus Banning and I'm the lead technical artist at Guerrilla Games. For this project I was responsible for getting the art and animation into the game engine. The original story proposal showed us extreme slow motion animations and close-up camera shots, which meant that we would have to increase the detail way beyond anything we ever rendered before. We started by stressing the engine to its limits, by setting everything up in its maximum resolution. For some shots this would put the total polygon count to over 100 million. The next step was to optimize the content so it would run at 30 frames per second or faster. First we start by removing everything that will not be seen by the viewer, such as models, lights and effects. After this step we go into more detail by looking at the textures and shaders. The trick is to remove enough to increase the performance of the engine, but leave in the important details. It is these details that make Killzone 2 stand out. For lights, we are able to control the exact size of the light. With this we limit the amount of polygons that need complex lighting calculations. Also, not all of the lights need to cast shadows, and by only activating this for a light where the effect will be noticed, we again increase the rendering performance. Good water reflections have always been a rare thing in games. However, for this project we added support for true planar reflections to the engine, allowing us to accurately simulate reflections on water. This technique was used for the cinematic version of this project. Because we developed the planar reflections while making the sequence, the technique unfortunately was not yet optimized enough for rendering real time. To work around this we rendered an image of the scene looking up from the water. This image we then added to the water shader and so faking the reflection. We do intend to improve the true reflection system to be used in real time. We also had to optimize the particle effect. This is done by reducing the amount of particles used for every effect. Because the sequence is played in slow motion, we had to be very careful with this. Decreasing the particle emission rate can leave very noticeable gaps in effects such as fire or smoke. The Helga sniper is featured in a very close up shot, so we wanted to make sure that he looked as good as possible. One thing we did to increase his detail was adding an extra set of animation control to the fabric that makes up his hood. This allowed our animators to add secondary motion to the cloth when he moves backwards away from the bullet. Creating this sequence in the game environment has shown us that we can push our engine far into the future. Hi, my name is Jeroen Krebbers. I'm a senior programmer on the tech team at Gorilla, and I'd like to talk you through some of the technological challenges the commercial presented to us. Since the commercial is played back in slow motion, this meant we had to tweak some of our special effects to compensate, most notably motion blur, which we had to scale up a notch. The debug views give some insights into the various components generated and stages used by our deferred rendering engine. Pressing the up button will display the normals, these are per pixel orientations which are used primarily for lighting. Pressing the up button again will display per pixel shininess of the material used to scale the reflective and specular properties of a pixel. The next view is a view without post processing like color filtering, depth of field, bloom and particles. The lighting view will display only the results of diffuse and specular lighting and shadows which as you can see is an important part of the Killzone 2's look. The last view is per pixel depth from the camera, which is used to determine occlusion and depth of field. In the first stage of rendering, these components, including per pixel velocity, are generated and stored in separate buffers. The lighting stage combines normals, shininess, lighting, shadows and textures, resulting in a fully lit scene, viewable as a debug mode without post-processing. The next stage renders particles and transparent effects like coronas and combines these with the previous stage. This stage also renders any high intensity effects like the background lighting and muzzle flashes, which will result in bloom around very bright areas during the last stage. In this last stage, depth of field, motion blur, colorization and bloom are combined and added to create the final frame ready for display. Most of the rendering components are animated or controllable and allow many degrees of freedom for artists and designers to create the look thereafter. For example, the bullet trails have exaggerated motion blur created by our special effects artists. Thank you for your time and enjoy Killzone 2.
Rated mature.